What's up, sports bettors? Alex here, and we are going to be going through when should you hedge a bet. So the bet we're going to be looking at is Broncos minus four and a half. So I placed this a while ago. If you go through the previous videos, we have the Broncos minus four and a half against the Seahawks in week one at minus 110 odds for 2.2K. Should we hedge this bet? And how do we think about hedging? So if I go to Odds Jam, there's a pretty interesting betting opportunity that I ended up considering hedging with. So it's Seahawks plus six and a half at plus 100 odds on win bet, right? So this is an arbitrage bet to the Betfair exchange. So arbitrage bets just mean, you know, you could place bets on both sides of the market, Broncos minus six and a half and Seahawks plus six and a half and make a risk-free profit a 0.5%. Right, day trading sports due to discrepancies in sportsbook odds. Arbitrage is literally risk free money in sports betting. But, anyways, whenever an ARB exists, it also means that there's a profitable bet, right? So, when there's an ARB between the Betfair Exchange and WinBet, we know there has to be a profitable bet. If you can make risk free money by betting equal and opposite outcomes on two sportsbooks, then one of the bets has to be good, right? One of the bets has to be positive EV. So what you'll notice is kind of looking at the data in the market, it's pretty clear this plus 100 on the Seahawks plus six and a half is now positive EV. So previously, Broncos minus four and a half was the sharp bet. Now, Seahawks at plus six and a half at plus 100 odds is the sharp play, right? It's favored on FanDuel. It's favored on the Betfair exchange, which by the way, only has three cents in market width. Absolutely absurd. Very tight, efficient market you have to be looking at before placing bets. Then we see Bet Online is pricing this at minus 113, and Pinnacle is pricing this at minus 108. So every sports book either has this, you know, as a flip, so plus 100 true odds, or they have the Seahawks plus six and a half um, on the point spread favored, and we're able to get this plus 100 on win bet. So what we can do is kind of run through the, the scenarios if I bet it. And by the way, yes, I bet it. You can see my bet right here. We have the Seahawks plus six and a half. Um, this is Monday night football. So September 12th, 2000 bucks to win 2000. So now we can kind of go through the scenarios, right? So I have the Broncos minus four and a half for 2.2K and I have the Seahawks plus six and a half for 2K. So this is a middle, right? Um, if the Seahawks you know, lose by less than seven points, then, or they win the game, of course, I'm winning $2,000 in profit. If the Broncos cover, you know, win by five or more points, I'm winning $2,000 profit on this bet. So kind of we can go through the three possible scenarios with this bet um, that we're hedging with. And the first is the Broncos win by seven plus points, right? So if the Broncos win by, let's say, 10 points um, or anything seven or more, this bet is going to win, right? So we're going to win $2,000 here, right? If the Broncos win by seven or more points, we are winning $2,000 on this Broncos minus four and a half bet. On Seahawks plus six and a half, we're losing $2,000. So, you know, we can actually make a column profit if win, and these are both just going to be the same amount. It's just going to be $2,000. So we can go here, format number, you know, accounting. So we're winning $2,000, you know, if either of these bets wins. But what's crazy is the Broncos win by seven plus, we don't lose anything, right? We win this bet, Broncos minus four and a half, we lose Seahawks plus six and a half. Now, if the Seahawks cover, you know, plus four and a half, so if the Seahawks lose by say a field goal or four points, or, you know, they win the game, then Broncos minus four and a half is losing. So we're losing our stake of $2,200 and we're winning $2,000 on Seahawks plus six and a half, right? If the Seahawks cover plus four and a half, they also, of course, covered plus six and a half. So this bet is winning. And then you have this rare scenario, which is actually, you know, not that uncommon, where we have a middle, right? So if the Broncos win by five or six points, we win both bets. So we win $4,000 in profit, which seems pretty good, right? Because um, we're guaranteed at the max, we can lose $200, and, you know, this is a pretty, you know, unlikely outcome, not unlikely outcome, but if the Broncos win by five or six, we're winning four grand. 
So this is technically a middle bet, right? This is kind of what the odds jam middle betting tool shows you is just due to these sports betting line movements and the way that books kind of move around odds, sometimes you're able to find these spots where you can, you know, bet a point spread down at four and a half and then bet the other side at six and a half. And you end up in this amazing scenario where we're either winning four grand or we're losing $200, right? Or we're scratching. So this is probably going to happen, you know, this may happen, let's say like 8% of the time, maybe a little higher, right? Broncos winning by six points, you know, that's probably like eight by five or six points. It's probably like, you know, let's say 7.5% to happen. So we can put probability to happen. And then this column is going to be, you know, net profit. So of course, I'm just kind of spitballing here. But, you know, six is a big number in football. It's two field goals, right? So the Broncos winning by six is a pretty likely outcome. The Broncos winning by seven plus, that's currently where the spread is, you know, set. So that's going to be like, you know, whatever, like 50% to occur. And then, you know, this is kind of going to be this. So um, it's going to be, you know, like uh, one minus this minus this. So this is kind of what we're looking at. A 42.5% chance we lose 200 bucks, a 7.5% chance we win four grand, and then a 50% probability, you know, we scratch. We gain or lose nothing. So, you know, that's kind of like the estimates. So long story short, yes, I did hedge this bet. I do think it's it's a good it's a good one to hedge. And as a sports better, like, you know, you're always looking for value. And if it turns out that hedging at a different line makes sense, then you should do it, right? Like, even if we open up, you know, the money line for this game, it's like if we're able to find a great line and bet the Seahawks at plus 300, that's pretty ridiculous value, right? If we're able to get the Seahawks at plus 300, no other sportsbooks giving us better than plus 235, that would be a positive EV bet, a bet with a ton of value that you would be foolish not to bet. You would be foolish not to bet the Seahawks at plus 300, right? Because worst case, you could go arbit with another sports book and make a risk-free profit. In the same way, let's say we bet the Seahawks plus 300, then another book slips up and they give you minus 230 on the Broncos. That also seems like a good price, right? So then it may make sense to hedge, right? So hedging really depends on the odds you're able to get and the bets you're able to find using Odds Jam. So hopefully you found this video helpful and let's make some money.